Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening to Caring Partner. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business, where our goal is to see you succeed. This week, our guest is Samantha Jerry of Little Cake Girl. Yes, what Little Cake Girl. Okay, tell us about Little Cake Girl. What is that about? Little Cake Girl is the brand behind all of this work that you're seeing here. Um, we are in the business of cake design. We do custom cakes, luxury cakes, which includes what you can see here, a lot of wedding cakes that we do and custom cakes for weddings, uh, for birthdays and other events. And um, how did you get the inspiration for Little Cake Girl? I started to bake when I was a young girl at home with my mom. And I would just experiment with a few things, try a few cupcakes, you know, a little few tiny little cakes at home. And I really enjoyed it. And my parents really encouraged it because they would carry the cakes to work and come back and say, can you please bake another one? That one finished. And so I quickly learned my way around the baking kitchen and the baking ingredients. And then eventually that kind of died down a little bit because then I had to, you know, get serious with schoolwork and all that. That began when I was about nine years old. Wow. Yeah. And so I didn't really think about it much later in life, in my teen years, but it came back, um, it came back heavily when I was in university. Yeah. And the interesting thing is you studied IT. I did study IT, yeah. Yeah. So when, well, I, I always had a love and a passion for IT, which I still do. Um, and I always knew that that's what I was going to study um, at a higher level. And so somewhere in between that degree, I don't know what happened, but the creative side kept knocking. And I didn't feel like IT was satisfying um, my desire to be more creative. And that's the point where, around 2010, where I began to experiment a little bit more in the kitchen. Yeah. I just knew that this time around, I was not going to just be a baker, but I wanted to bring all my creativity to the table and to create works of art through cake. Yeah. yeah. So, Masa, did you have to study to do this, kind of come up with these kind of creations? Um, two things. One, I did do a local course because I really wanted to understand how to work with edible, edible sugar paste so that I can be able to create things like this on cake. But I can say that predominantly I spent a lot of YouTube hours, a lot of YouTube hours researching about how they do it, um, you know, the, the more developed sides of the world. When it comes to these industries of cake yeah. baking, every, yeah. everybody around the corner is baking yes, a cake. Yes. What sets you apart? To be honest, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer to that other than the fact that this is such a passion for me. I do this um, with laser focus because this, I believe, is what God has given me to do. So I don't spend a lot of time comparing myself with, with other people. I just do what I feel is right and at my level and I keep pushing my boundaries. At what point did you formalize this business? When I was sure that I wanted to start this as a business, I started very, very small. But I did register uh, a business name in 2010. Reason being, it was a plan. I knew I was going to do this. I had 10,000 shillings. And I said, OK, I'm going to take a break from what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to register this business and start. Because I was actually very confident that it was going to grow. So I did register a business name. Um, and that time, it was Bliss Occasions. Later on, I came to change it to Little Cake Girl in 2013. Why is that? I wanted to have a more unique name. As you've said, there are many people in the industry. I felt that I needed to have a name that now would set me apart from other people, a name that's not very generic, and a name that's extremely relatable to who I am, because I am this business. And so, I mean, I'm four foot 11. <laughs> little Cake Girl, everybody knows I'm the little one who does cakes, you know? So Little Cake Girl just felt really right. Samantha, how did you start marketing yourself? Because everybody is doing cakes. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I knew from the beginning was that I needed to build a portfolio. I needed to have cakes that people can see that I've already done. So when I did my very first cake um, in 2010, I made sure it was the most beautiful cake I'd ever made because that's the cake that was going to sell to the next client and so on and so forth. So I made that cake, I took a beautiful photo of it and I sent that photo out to everybody that I knew and told them that I do cakes. I had done one cake, but I told them that I do cakes. And that's how it's been actually up until this day. All I do is just increase and expand my portfolio, like what you can see here. Yeah. And this helps me to market myself. Um, so say, but you use these for marketing as opposed to what people use. People use pictures. Yes. Yeah. 
Why this? The main reason is, um, just like you said, most people will have an album. When you come and ask for, you know, can I see the kind of work you've done, You'll, they'll whip out an album. But when you come to our bakery, you walk into the album. And for me, this experience is a lot better than, you know, just having a book. What do you call this? Basically, it's just a centerpiece. Yeah. And how long does this take to do? So, this would take around maybe a day or two to make, depending on how busy we are with other actual orders. Yeah, this would take about a day or two. Some more, some less. And what is the process of making the centerpiece? Um, basically, we do the same thing we would do as though it was a real cake. Okay, so we take the material, it's already shaped in, in, in these rounds, and then we cover them with fondant, decorate them, stick the flowers on them. We do these separately, and we do it in stages. Okay, Samantha, so we must take a break, but when we come back, we want to know how you cost your, your cakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. And now we have the award for Best Commercial Bank in East Africa. And the winner is Equity Bank. Equity Bank has been named the best commercial bank in East Africa as Equity Group Managing Director and CEO Dr. James Mwangi took the prize for the Banker of the Year. And we have the award for the best commercial bank in Kenya. And the winner is Equity Bank. Equity also took the Best Commercial Bank in Kenya trophy, presented at the 5th Banker East African Banking Awards Ceremony, held at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Nairobi. The awards are a recognition of the effort and success by industry players as they strive to better business and customer service. So tonight we recognize and celebrate the excellence of performance, growth, product innovation and customer service across the banking industry in East Africa. The bank won five awards, altogether including Best Digital Offering in East Africa and Most Innovative Bank in Kenya. The two awards acknowledged the bank's continuous digitization on the mobile Equitel and online easy banking platforms that offer clients convenience, choice and control. Matthew Amlot, editor of Banker Africa magazine, said Equity Bank's increased innovation had been recognized by industry peers. Well, Equity Bank itself has had, has had, a, had an excellent year where they've, they've increased and innovated in, in new and interesting ways. Um, as such, they, they, they were obviously decided for by the voters as having been recognized as such for their, for their successes over the course of the year. Commenting on the Hall of Awards, the Credit General Manager Samuel Ndungu said the accolades validate the bank's model. The awards are important to us because they validate what we are trying to do, confirming that our strategy is right, confirming that uh, we are doing what is required by our customers out there. The recognition means that we are in touch with the reality uh, and as, as, as an institution, it means that we, we, we are aligned and uh, we are focused on achieving our mission and vision in as far as transforming our people is concerned. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, our guest is Samantha Jerry of Little Cake Girl. How many of these cakes do you make, um, let's say, in a given week? So in a week, essentially, we will not be doing these kind of cakes, many of them. A lot of the time in a week, we'll have birthday orders, okay? And those are customized cakes, okay? So for those kind of cakes, I... I can honestly say we don't like to pass maybe 10 or 12 in a week. Reason being, we sell art. What it is we are giving you is a piece of art. It's a masterpiece. And how many people do you work with? Um, I have one full-time. I have others who, are, who we call 
um, when we need an extra hand or two. We have people who do deliveries. Yeah, I like that you're very honest and you do tell your customers I can only do a certain number of cakes because you want to give them something beautiful, something memorable. Yeah. 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 So we, we are very honest actually. We're very open. I'm, I'm a very talkative person. So I like to engage with my clients and let them know what's happening. Sometimes people will call me two days before a birthday um, and ask for a cake and I'm like, I'm really sorry. Unfortunately, I can't. And they say, Samantha, please, can't you just squeeze it in? And I tell them, you see, if I did, I would have to rush your order. And I wouldn't want to do that for you. So, but next time, call me a week in advance and I'm happy to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, just because we want to maintain the level that we've already established. Samantha, so, how do you market yourself? Um, at this moment, we take full advantage of social media. Social media is great because it's a pool of people who are already interacting and you just throw yourself in there and tell people, look at what I'm doing. So I've used social media successfully for the last, uh, I would say, about eight years and it has brought nearly all of the business that we have at Little Cake Girl. So when we do cakes, we post some of them, some of them we post, some of them we don't. Um, but a lot of the showstopper cakes are the ones you'll find on our Instagram page, just to give people a picture of who we are and what we like to do. Who is your customer? My customer is the person who understands good things, a person who has good taste. This kind of work takes a lot of time to do, so we like to have customers who appreciate value um, and who will understand the price attached to this kind of value. Because this is a premium product, this is a premium service, this is a premium experience. We have the kind of customers who are very happy to pay for this. And those are our clients. We don't really shut the door on people. There's always a way around everything. Um, but we generally stick in, in the upper middle class market. Yeah, yeah. What, what kind of orders do you get? Do you ever get any wild orders that uh, sometimes yes. <laughs> which are out of the box? Talk we to us about have, that. We do have. We have some orders which we don't post on Instagram or Facebook, you won't see them there. Some people request that their cakes not be shown um, on, in the public. Um, but mo for, for us, every week is a challenge. So we love cakes that challenge us. Like the other day I did a cake that represents the blood red black rose. Wow. I've never seen one, but I had to figure it out, you see. And how do you balance yourself between being a mother and your work? Yes, so I am a mother. I have two children. Um, my daughter, Jade, who's turning eight this year, and my son, Aiden, who's turning four. They are such a big part of my story because the reason why I do what I do is just because, one, they have to have a mom they look up to. This supports my children, and it just gives me meaning. I love my business, and so balancing the two is very important for me. So a couple of years ago, what I learned was that I must give whatever I'm doing 100%. So when I'm spending time with my children, I give that 100%. When I'm spending time working, I give that 100%. Having been in this business mm -hmm. for eight years, what eight are the years. lessons have you learned? I have learned that you must have laser focus, to be honest. Laser focus meaning you really have to be sure about what you want out of your business, where you want to be. Where do you see yourself a year, five years, ten years from now? Another one that I've learned is that you have to manage your finances as an entrepreneur. So how did you manage to grow your capital? Because this, this is not cheap to do. No, it isn't. Um, well, with the 10,000, the first thing I did was I went to town and I bought the basic, basic tools I needed and a few ingredients. Um, at that time, I was buying things retail. So I just bought one packet of flour and one packet of sugar and all that, baking tin and a few measuring items. And from there, what, I'd used to, what I used to do was sell a cake, buy an item, sell a cake, buy an item. And that really helped in the beginning. Besides the focus and finance, what other lessons have you learned? One of the other things I can say is I didn't realize in the beginning how many phone conversations I was going to have with people that I don't know. That's my clients, right? I had to learn slowly but surely, not to take it personally when people don't like the work that I've given them, and also to really, really celebrate good feedback. That is essential because it builds a rapport between you and your client, even when they're not extremely happy with what you've done. I spend a lot of time engaging with my clients. And so one of the things I've learned is your clients are your friends. Be friendly with them, be kind to them, 
make their day, you know, go and o go over and above. I mean, there are people just like we are. Mm. But there must be challenges. It can't always be happy, happy, happy. No, they, it can't always be happy. Um, there are many challenges. Work like this takes a lot of effort, as you said. It costs to make these things. Not everybody is willing to pay the price that you're setting for your, for your cakes. Um, so finding your client is a challenge. One of the other challenges that we face is undercutting in our industry. What does that mean? That means that um, we'll have bakers charging way less than you for the same thing. Essentially, this is a premium product. Um, if, for example, this cost 100000 somebody else charges 20000 for the same amount of work, that's what I'm calling undercutting. So that has been a challenge. We've, we're always trying to you know, come together as bakers and encourage each other again to place good value on the kind of work that they're putting in. It's interesting to note that bakers do come together. Yes, we do come together. We need each other, actually. Um, we have actually a baker's association, which I'm part of. We have similar grievances. We have similar grievances. So it helps when you can pick up the phone and say, hey, are you also struggling with the price of butter? Do you have a supplier, you know, and all these things? Or when you're not available, I have a customer. I'm not going to be available. Maybe I'm traveling. Could you please take this order? I'm going to pass her on to you. It's really important to come together and collaborate. What would you advise anybody who is interested in getting to bakery? I would tell them one, train. Um, go to a training school. We train. Um, they can come to the little cake oh, girl. Okay. Yeah, Tell we, us about your training school then. I started to train by default because I would put my work out there and then people would ask me, can I come, can you teach me how to do this? And initially I didn't know how to structure a class. I said, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. But eventually I said, okay, so this is an, an, another potential income stream and it will enable me to have a group of people who are coming up into my level which also is a good resource because it's nice to know that I have a bunch of people who have trained, who I can call on when I need them. If we have a big project, I can call on any one of them. Samantha, eight years from now, where will you be? Where do you see yourself? I love to teach and I love to mentor. So I know that that's the direction that Little Cake Girl is going to take at some point. We'll still be baking, we'll still be um, very well known in the industry, just as we are now. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of inclusion of other people. Thank you, Samantha. Your story is very inspiring. And I know it will help a lot of people to know that you can actually turn your hobby into a business. Thank you for your story. Thank you, too. Thank you for having me. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week our expert is Wajiko Mura, founder and administrator of the Baker's Club. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Nice yeah. to be here. Wow. Wajiko, today is very special for the bakers. Tell yeah. us about that. So yes, today we have celebrated the World Baking Day. We have done a lot of baking and uh, basically it's a day where we celebrate being bakers. We, uh, we encourage each other to bake for others. How widely spread is the World Baking Day? In Kenya, it's not so much celebrated. And as Baker's Club, we are actually marking it for the first time in the four years that uh, we Baker's Club has been existing. So we want to make it a tradition. Tell us about your Baker's Club. Our Baker's Club is an online platform. It's a group that brings together bakers and uh, basically everybody who's in the baking industry. We have cake lovers, those people who are there just for cake. We have people so passionate about baking. We have people who sell to us all the things that we use, the merchants, uh, those who sell us the accessories, equipment, and all our supplies. How many members do you have in your baker's club? So far we have a membership of 247,000. 247,000, wow. Yes, and wow. growing. And um, we started as Kenyans, but online there are no boundaries. So we have members from all over the world. Wajiko, one of the things Samantha mentioned is that um, she, 
the club has helped her scale up. What are the benefits do you offer your members? The group has bakers from all at all levels. We have those who have been in baking for longer and are, are quite experienced and uh, way ahead of others. Then we also have those who are beginners who are just getting into baking. There's a lot of information shared every minute, every day, and members get to learn from each other. When somebody like uh, Samantha, who I love her cakes, posts her cakes, somebody who's just beginning will be able to learn and ask, how did you do this? So there are opportunities when it comes to baking? Absolutely. Tell us about it. Opportunities are there, many opportunities, and one thing that people don't know is that with baking, you can actually earn a living from your kitchen. There are people who are employed, maybe they're not earning enough, you can supplement that by baking and selling from your house, starting a home baking business. You will learn a lot on uh, the Baker's Club, how to cost, how to price your cakes, because there is the business part of baking, mm. not just having a cake and not wondering how much <laughs> it is worth. Majiko, having founded the club four years ago, what are some of the challenges your members experience? We have a problem with getting quality ingredients. Very few companies do have very good quality ingredients. And we also have a problem with our financials. We do not have a lot of people coming to show us the opportunities where we can maybe fund our businesses and grow them from home bakers to maybe micro enterprises and medium sized companies. What are some of the things that you have been able to do to help your members, uh, especially the career issue? Uh, what we do, what we have been doing is uh, when we um, encounter people who are in career business, we try and talk to them to customize uh, their, maybe their, their motorbikes or their vehicles to food grade. And we also have members who have started the courier, cake courier businesses. And that is awesome because they know what cake is about. So they would customize uh, their carriages to suit that. We have also uh, talked to, been talking to companies like Kenafric for icing sugar. The icing they've taken us through, the icing sugar is good quality icing sugar. So we have other companies that have come on board to talk to us as bakers and telling us what they, they are selling and uh, giving us quality ingredients because the backbone of a good cake is good quality ingredients. Can you demystify prices for the cakes? Because at the end of the day, cost is very important. In every business, you'll agree with me, Catherine, that uh, figures are very important. So uh, if you do your costing well, know the cost of production for your cakes, and then have a target market, define your client, and market you know, targeting that client, you will make money. So as a baker, if you give quality, your clients will definitely buy from you. Okay. What does one need to do to become a member of the Baker's Club? All you need to be part of the Baker's Club is first be on Facebook, mm -hmm. then you can search for the Baker's Club and uh, click on join and we'll approve. Wajiko, you mentioned that you have over 200,000 members. Are they vetted or do you vet your members? Uh, when somebody requests to join, uh, the request comes to the admin panel and we can go through your profile. If we find that uh, maybe there are some funny dealings on your profile, we do not approve. Again, uh, all the posts that go to the wall are approved. Finally, what advice would you give any person who's interested in baking or any young person who may want to use this as a business? Uh, baking is a profession like any other. You can make a living from baking if you do it right. Baking is also very therapeutic. When you're working on a cake, you lose yourself. You lose count of time. You forget everything. Thank you so much, Wajiko, for that. It's actually interesting to know that there's a baker's club that anybody can join. You're welcome. And uh, like you said, it's very therapeutic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Do have a blessed week. Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank, you are listening, caring partner.